they're worried about more about their own brand and getting hurt than they are like the legacy of the game. I, you can't tell me otherwise because when you're watching this for the last decade, it's been awful basketball for the last decade. It's just been a layup line, you know, and the Elam ending, as you pointed out, it provided a little bit of, you know, spice to it. But even then it was like, you know, they had that, that whole thing where each quarter was going to mean money to a charity. And even then the guys didn't give a damn. I just, I don't get it, man. I really just don't get it. Where's the, where's the pride? You know, just a little bit, just a sliver. I thought at least in the fourth quarter, they would show a little bit of, you know, something, but no, it was just, I could watch that shit, you know, at the park. I don't need to watch that here. I felt like the, the Elam ending actually, uh, or Elon ending made it more interesting the last few years because they did seem to try a little bit more tonight. It wasn't, there was no switch. They never flipped a switch. You thought, Oh, the West got it to 12 points. Maybe. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. And they were like, Oh yeah. 12 points. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Lay up, lay up, yeah. lay up, lay up, lay up. That's yeah. it. Also, <laughs> let's try to get Tyrese Halliburton, the, the MVP. Unfortunately it didn't work out because Damian Luther got it. So <laughs> I, I love that Carl Anthony Towns found a way to score 50 points and nobody gave a shit, right? <laughs> the most useless 50 points in any game ever. This dude, this dude has had a, a really tough last month. He had 62 points at a loss, 50 at an all-star loss. Nobody gives a shit. Like, that's, nobody cares. No, not at all. I mean, they cared less than uh, – they care less about that than they did about defense tonight. Look, I – I don't, is it even worth? Uh, we'll get into book and and Katie in the in the second segment, but like, is it even worth trying to save this thing at this point? I don't know, man. I almost feel like you just gotta give them the moniker and call it a day. Yeah, you know. I, yeah, I'm kind of I'm at the point where I'm like, save all the money. You, you want to talk? Oh, there's there's a donation element. Just donate all the money you'd spend on an All Star weekend to the charities and and be done with it. Like. Yeah, like give these guys a week off. It makes the play better when they come back, and just do away with this at this point. I mean, it's not, I, you know, and they did like a six-hour pregame show on TNT for this crap for nothing, for absolutely nothing. I, I just don't understand it. It's like, you know, they they spent all this money to to hype this up. It's almost like Super Bowl level hype, and then you get there. And like the main people that have to care the most don't give a shit. And so they don't play hard. They don't really care. They're just giving each other layups. They, they play half-ass defense. Like I'm not trying to sit here and be like, you know, like it was better back in the day, but at least they, they played hard, you know, they played hard. So when you saw a phenomenal pass, you knew it was like a legit phenomenal pass. Not just, you know, I'm just doing it because I can. Yeah, ten, tonight felt like probably the worst we've ever seen. Like it just, it, even even the the cool plays weren't all that cool. And you're like, yeah, okay, that was an all right dunk. Like I think the the coolest thing that that happened from a Suns perspective was after the whistle, Devin Booker did a windmill dunk. Like, ooh, okay, great. Yeah. Other than that, it was like. Okay, there was a couple full court passes that guys made. Luca chucked a three quarter court that hit the top of the backboard. Like there's, there's nothing overly memorable about uh, about this in, in any way. And you know, I get the league has to do this because it makes money. They sell it as part of their package. But you can't tell me that that TNT or who or ESPN or whoever gets in. Uh, on this next round of TV buying is going, you know what? I really want to spend a hundred million dollars to get the all-star game. I, I extra on my contract here because, you know, between, uh, between all-star Saturday night and all-star Sunday, yo, that's, that's worth this money. Like they can't be making that, making that back on ads in any ways because they're getting two, three, three, four million people. If they're lucky watching this crap. Well, I will say this. Uh, you know, Adam Silver kind of addressed it last year about how he didn't really like the way everything unfolded. 
and you keep doing this, you're going to lose a lot of this audience. The audience that you had, you know, listen, for like two or three decades, they had built up, you know, since the 80s and Bird and Magic and then Jordan and Isaiah and all that stuff. Like the, the All-Star game meant something in the 80s and 90s and even early 2000s. And then it just faded away. And guys just started just taking it easy and not really giving a shit. And I'll tell you what, if you stop giving a damn, then the viewership goes down, the money goes down, the sponsorships goes down, and then you don't think Adam Silver isn't going to be like, hey, you all need to pick it up because this is BS. This can't happen. So I, you got you to gotta at least care a little bit. I'm not saying you got to go – you know, balls to the wall for 48 minutes by any stretch of the imagination, but at least, you know, give a little bit of resistance. 200 points in an all-star game is ridiculous. Come on now. I mean, shit. 211 is where the East netted out here. And, I mean, yeah, there was no ne- – not once did they try to stop anything coming down the lane. There wasn't, hey, I'm going to man this guy up. Like, there was, there was none of that. I'm at the point where if I got to watch bad basketball, I'd rather watch the last team in the NBA play the first team in the G League at, at the all-star break, let those two teams battle it out for bragging rights. You know, like you can't tell me that that G league team wouldn't be playing its ass off. And then, you know, the Detroit Pistons of the world wouldn't be playing hard. So they didn't get embarrassed by a bunch of a G league guys. So, I mean, at least that'd be something. I will say this. Um, I, and this is going to sound, I mean, I'm 44. I get this is going to make me sound super old and like old man on the lawn kind of thing. I get it. But you look at the NFL Pro Bowl that they took away, basically made it flag football and all this random other BS that nobody really cares about. You take the NBA All-Star game, which nobody really cares about. And it's like, how can you not sit there and be like, well, it's this, this generation just doesn't give a shit. They don't care about the all-star game. They don't care about this stuff. You know, they're they're worried about more about their own brand and getting hurt than they are like the legacy of the game. I, you can't tell me otherwise because when you're watching this for the last decade, it's been awful basketball for the last decade. It's just been a layup line, you know, and the Elam ending, as you pointed out, it provided a little bit of, you know, spice to it. But even then it was like, you know, they had that that whole thing where each quarter was going to mean – money to a charity and even then the guys didn't give a damn (laughs) well yeah it's it's the old jordan fuck them kids rule that's what they (laughs) felt like they were going with right like hey we're gonna emulate the greatest of all time we don't care you know like i just i i wonder if it is again i i don't think you're that far off i do wonder if it's a a generational thing because we've heard the same thing in baseball i mean Oh, the 70s and 80s, those all-star games meant something. Pete Rose trucking a guy at the at home plate, you know, uh for for a, to score a run. Nobody does that these days. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe they just yeah. don't give a shit because there's there really is nothing to it. The pride, the the you know, bragging rights between conferences just don't mean crap. And and maybe that's the the whole thing to it. I heard uh, Gary Payton yesterday on Sirius Satellite NBA Radio. And they were interviewing him about about this kind of stuff. And he said, you know what? During the All-Star break, for those two days, I'm cool with everybody. We're all friends. It's all good. He's like, but as soon as the game was over or as soon as we got into the game, like, I didn't give a damn about you. Like, I'm trying to win. I'm trying to take your head off. And there is part of that that I feel like has been lost because of this whole, like, you know, coddling of players and, you know, it's the player empowerment era, which I'm, I'm cool. I'm all cool with, but there's got to be something that makes you want to be competitive. And I feel like the competitive nature and the competitive, you know, I don't don't know. I don't know what the right word is. It's just gone. It's just gone. And, And I don't, what, what am I supposed to watch right now? You know, and then you combat that with, you know, obviously everything that happened during, all-star Saturday and Friday. And it's just like, what? Honestly, Friday was a little bit better because at least guys were talking shit to each other. You know, Benedict <laughs> Matherin was getting into it and I loved it, but that's about it.